Hello grade nines and welcome to the video where I'll be going through what you need to know for your final exams for maths for grade nine. Let's go. In this video, I'll be telling you the topics for each exam coming up. And later on in the video, I show you more or less the mark allocations that your teacher will give to each of these questions. So for example, graphs count more or less this many marks. Algebraic equations count more or less this many marks in your test. I also give you tips on how to repair, how to study, and I'm going to show you where to find past papers. So you don't want to miss any part of this video. Before we jump in, I just want to tell you about this amazing platform called Learn Foster. So it's an online platform. You pay a subscription fee and what you get is access to not only term four content, so term four topics, but November exam workshops where they go through topics from term one all the way through to term four. So Learn Faster includes the different topics and they include videos on the different topics that takes you through the topic through the important things that you need to know they do practice questions they do past paper exam questions like you can see over here in the screenshots and like I said, if you sign up today, you get access to their November workshops, which goes through things from term one, term two, three and four. So all the geometry that you've forgotten, all the algebra that you've forgotten, they do it with you in videos step by step. What I also love is that they have a helpline on WhatsApp where you can message them and they will answer questions that you have. And as someone that teaches math, I understand that the struggle is real when you're practicing math. And even though something might be broken down step by step for you on a video, or maybe you're working out in your workbook, you're like, mm, I don't understand this. So having this is a game changer. So sign up now for Learn Faster. Click the link in the description box below. But let's jump into the topics for your final exam. These are the broad topics for paper one, but don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know under each of these topics. And these are the broad topics that you need to know under paper two. Yes, you have to write two final exam papers, paper one and paper two, and each paper counts 75 marks. That is a recommendation by the Department of Basic Education. Your school might be doing something different. So always remember to check with your teacher. The topic breakdown is also recommended by the department. So again, please check with your teacher what your school will be doing. Starting off with paper one concepts or topics, we've got whole numbers. So this includes everything from HCF and LCM, ratio and rates, direct and inverse or indirect proportion. I do have videos of this on my channel, so you can go watch those. We've also got everything involving finance. So finance is quite a lot, but they, they pretty much summarize it qu um, quite a bit here. So everything that has to do with financial mass, then we've got everything that has to do with integers. So the types of questions that you can expect in your exam look like this. These come from past papers. I will link all the past papers that I'm putting over here. The memos are accessible as well in the description box below so you can practice them. Here are some finance related questions and also some rate or speed distance time questions. On the screen again, you can see some finance questions over here and then some integers questions. So this is how they'll ask integers. They say without the use of a calculator, which means you need to show all of the in-between steps. Then our next topic, according to our breakdown, exponents. So this is the first little bit of algebra that we've done this year. Here is a little bit of a summary of the exponents, the laws of exponents. I also do have summaries. You can go look at my page. The link will be in the description box below where I go over the different rules. And for grade nines, I also have some really nice videos that summarize the difference between working with exponents, simplifying, distributing, factorizing and solving and clearing up what the difference is between those things. I'll link it in the description box below. So here are examples of exponent questions. As you can see, they can actually get quite complicated. Then our next topic is numeric and geometric patterns. So number patterns and linked to that. That's why I put them together are the functions and relationships. So knowing how to find the general rule of a pattern, TN equals 2N plus 1, how to get that rule, how to know if you're dealing with a linear pattern with a constant difference or a pattern with a constant ratio, working with tables, flow diagrams, all of that. Here are examples of what your questions could look like for this section. Um, as you can see, we've got first two terms of the sequence. They give you the TN. They want you to complete the table. They want you to find the rule, the TN. 
things like that. Then we've got algebraic expressions. So our second big part of algebra, this is quite a big part. You have to know how to simplify. You, know, no, you need to know how to do products, binomials, squaring a binomial. Some teachers call it the FOIL method. You need to know how to factorize. I do have videos on factorizing on my channel. I also have videos going over exam papers for this. So check it out. Here's a few examples of past paper questions dealing with this topic. Um, and as you can see, there's also some factorizing questions. I only pasted two here. I have a video that goes over a lot more factorizing. So please practice that. Then we have algebraic equations. And again, in your breakdown, so in the document that I'm showing you here, they summarize it quite a lot, but there's quite a few equations that you need to know. So exponential equations, equations where you have to factorize first, so quadratic equations, substitution, so that would be simultaneous equations, equations involving exponents, equations with fractions. So you need to practice all of those. Here's just a few examples of how they can ask equations in your exam so for example this type at the bottom over here you would have to factorize first so factorizing is very important grade nines then we've got graphs so this is linear graphs finding the y-intercept the x-intercept finding the gradient drawing graphs giving me the equation of a line and here are some examples of what they could ask in a test. Again, I've put a very, very few examples, but this can get quite detailed and difficult in the test. So here's a summary of all those concepts. And if your test is out of 75, and these are guidelines that are basically put forward by the Department of Education, then this is the approximate mark allocation. But remember, schools can do different things. It depends on your school, depends on your curriculum, it depends on your it depends on a lot of things. So please check with your teacher before you just decide to study for what paper. So I'm listing these as paper one concepts. This is how it works at my school. It might be different for your school. So just double check. But for those of you that are following the GC and you're doing GC exams, these will be the topics covered in the GC paper one. Okay, so it's recommended by the department. And here's the rest of that summary over here. So you can use the mark allocations as a guide to help you figure out what you need to spend more time on. But grade nines, I think it's more important as well for me to tell you to make a list of the topics. And then, yes, it is about mark allocation. So you can see, for example, expressions here, this algebra over here counts quite a lot of marks. Okay more so than exponents, but if you struggle badly with exponents, you need to prioritize studying exponents as well. Okay, so it's about the difficulty, what you struggle with, and what you think is going to count the most marks in your test. That is, That should advise your study plan. And I know for a lot of people, you've forgotten those term one concepts, but that's why it's important to make use of trusted resources, things that can help you, videos, YouTubers, things like Learn Faster that I mentioned earlier in this video. Remember to check out the link for that in the description box. Let's take a look at paper two. So this is an overview of the topics for paper two, starting with geometry of straight lines, geometry of 2D shapes, transformation geometry, I just removed functions and relationships because that's paper one. But we've got area and perimeter, surface area and volume. Right. So my first topic, very, very important topic, geometry of straight lines. So this is angles on a straight line. This is angles around a point. This is alternate angles. This is co-interior angles, corresponding angles. All of those things, sum of angles in a triangle, exterior angles of a triangle, you need to know your theorems. These are examples of some of the questions that can be asked, okay? Very important to practice this. Then we've got geometry of 2D shapes. Again, this is a big topic. It involves, this is actually where the triangles fall in. Then we also include quadrilaterals. You need to know the properties of quads, the definitions of quads, the theorems related to quads, and something else that falls under here is similarity and congruency. A very important but a very tricky section to deal with. Then we've got transformation geometry. As you can see, these are sorts of the sorts of examples you'll get for that. 
then area and perimeter of 2D shapes, so flat shapes, and then surface area and volume of 3D objects. So for these sections, it's very important for you to memorize your formulae that you will need to use. So how to calculate the surface area of a rectangular prism. You need to know the formulas that go along with that for doing surface area versus volume. Same thing for cylinders. Very, very important. Here's a summary of all the topics for to, uh, paper two, again, with approximate mark allocations. Again, I cannot stress enough that it is dependent on your school. So please check with your teachers. Please double check with your teachers and check if this lines up with what they've told you. And then how do you actually study for maths? I need to do a whole series of videos on this alone, but I will touch on the fact that first things first, you need to have summary so i would say a page of summaries for each of your main topics this it can be in a flow diagram format a mind map format anything that makes sense i do share a lot of it on my other channels my other social media channels so i will link that stuff down below for you to access make your own summaries for your topics i don't have summaries for every topic yet but make your own summaries then you read through your summaries once you've read through your summaries, make sure you memorize any important formulae. So financial mass formulae, area and perimeter, those sorts of things that you need to memorize, properties of rectangles, properties of quadrilaterals, whatever. Then you need to practice. So first practice examples that have been done in class. So examples your teacher gave you where she gave you the answer, homework that you did and you marked. So practice them again. It doesn't matter if you did them already in class with your teacher. Practice them again cover your answers and see if you can get to the correct answer again and if you can't look at the working that your teacher did with you or the example that they did with you in class and then try again okay it's so important to practice then you have the option of practicing past papers so the ones that i showed you in this video i will link down below but you can access many many more and here are some sites where i find some grade nine past papers that are available to you so we've got testpapers.co.za, they have grade 9, math, also languages and a few other subjects. Then if you are writing the GEC exam, you can head over to the National Department of Basic Education page. Also check out the Department of Basic Education pages for more grade 9 resources as well as the Western Cape Education Department website. They have some awesome grade nine maths resources. And then this is SA Papers. So just type it in Google. You can get access to a lot of papers as well as their memos. So their answers. So when you practice for maths, you practice the question. Don't look at the answer. Then you mark what you did using their memo. If you get it wrong, look at the working out, see what they did wrong. And also keep a page a list of everything that you constantly get wrong or things that you struggle with. So you know just before the test, the day before, two days before the test, you must go over those things again. I really hope that this video has been helpful for you. I wish you all the best with preparing for your final exams and I hope to see you in some of my videos that I do for grade nine maths. Bye everybody!